they move on to react to LeBron's triple double, uh, which uh, um, is enough to put the Lakers past the Grizzlies as they came back in that fourth quarter. They were able to hang around there and they were able to get it done. LeBron James, though, um, aged at the ridiculous age of 39 years old, can it be? Can it be? Uh, 40 with a month and some change left December 30th um, just went out and dropped 35 points on a 13 of 20, 20 uh, 13 of 22 shooting 12 rebounds four assists four from seven from three and um, and yeah he's just a, he's just a ridiculous freakish human ball of nature i mean at age 39 to do what he did um you know yeah you're going up against a john morant less grizzlies team so i I don't think the win is as impressive as we should make it out to be but um but let's say john morant was playing he's not he's not he's not the guy that's gonna be tasked with slowing down lebron 35 points 14 assists 12 rebounds a 35 point triple double and it's not a weak triple double 14 assists 12 rebounds you know you know those the 2010 and 10 no this is a proper triple double on all facets of what a triple double is supposed to be he was pushing the ball up the court and getting guys involved he was getting to the basket he was hitting shots um you know obviously you know the rebounds almost come to you you know box out and get to the ball um but you know he he created a lot of open opportunities for players he was attacking the basket as lebron always does he's a you know the greatest driver of the basketball in the history of basketball that you know you know especially from what i've ever seen there's never been a player even at this age right now that can attack the basket that the way lebron can it's just if lebron puts his head down and says i'm getting to the basket 99 out of 99 times, you can have to foul him. Now, early on his career, you know, you know that would have been a viable option because LeBron hasn't been, you know, he, he started off as a pretty poor free throw shooter. In fact, his career free throw percentage is, I, I believe, in the, in the 70s. Um, in the 70s. And, you know, if you've taken 73, and if you've taken how many free throws that he takes... He's took in his career. That's an awfully amount. 73 is not that great. That's an awful amount of points that he's left off the table by, um, by you know, missing free throws. But, um, but you know, uh, uh, you know, his free throw percentage right now is good. Uh, is very, very good. Like, for his standards, um, he's shooting, um, I had the number, I had the number, but I can't find it. Yes, okay, he is currently shooting 79, 78.9, 79%. Um, that is, you know, that is the best he's ever shot. Obviously, this is only through 11 games, but uh, if, you know, of this, if he were able to maintain this throughout the season, that would be his, you know, his best ever. And his three-point percentage right now is the best it's ever been as well, with him shooting 45.9%, uh, damn near 46%. Now, obviously, this is through 11 games, and all, and these statistics are subject to change. But I just want to put into context how age 39, on the verge of being 40, he is doing some things that he's never done at this level. And that's just absolutely phenomenal. It's a testament to his greatness and his longevity and his ability to adapt. You know, nobody talks about LeBron James and how he adapt. He's been able to adapt thoroughly throughout the years. This is a LeBron James um, that entered the league um, in terms of his three-point percentage. He shot in his rookie year 29%. Then he was always floating around that 33, 34, 35% for a majority of his season uh, for, for his career. This is a LeBron James now in the last, you know, last season he shot 41% from three. This season so far he's been uh, 45.9. The way he's been able to adapt um, to where the league is going, 
He's been able to improve his game. It's just a testament to his hard work and his determination to be the best that he can be. And, and we know how much he takes care of his body and all that and how he's still at a crazy, freakish, athletic freak of nature, even at this age. But overall, it's just when people say, like, they don't have him in their top, like, fives or even eight uh, or even seven eights it's just ridiculous and i'm talking about current NBA players it's ridiculous to me because you're telling me look a lot of people shea gilgis alexander great nba player he's amazing you know this season averaging 27.9 points a game on 50 percent field goal percentage he's been really really good and he's been the best player on a okc team that's been the best team in the league up to this point yes i can't take that away from him but you're telling me you put lebron replace shea with lebron on that okc team they're not getting past those mavericks last year you're telling me they're not getting past those mavericks uh are you telling me that uh, you know, I would disagree with you that on an extreme level. I would also go as far as saying, I think you replaced LeBron James with Luka Doncic on that Mavericks team last season that played the Celtics. I think that comp- that series actually ends up being a series instead of that, you know, crap show that we saw at the NBA Finals last season. I think we would have had a legitimate final. Now, I'm not going to go as far as saying, he, they, you know, he, they would have won Boston with LeBron because, well, Boston was crazy, you know, Boston... You know, that's one of the most, you know, the best teams ever created uh, in terms of just pure talent uh, in one roster. It was a team with Chris Stops, with Jalen Brown, Derek White, you know, Jason Tatum, you know. They went deep, you know, uh, Drew Holiday, you know. I just named five of five damn near elite players on one team so i'm not saying you know lebron would have been enough but it would have been a way better of a series than we saw last season and and <coughs> now the, the Jokic one you got me there Jokic one i can't really make that much uh of a argument there out of lean Jokic over lebron but let's say you put lebron for you know okay um well, this one doesn't really work because he barely plays. But you see people uh, on a uh, consistent basis put Joel and beat over LeBron. For me, that's just ridiculous. That's just ridiculous. And a lot has to do with the fact that Joel Embiid was not available. Well, guess what? That's a big part of, you know, being a great NBA player, being up there in the rankings. You got to be available. Joel Embiid is never available. Joel Embiid is never available. And what LeBron is doing right now, I think he is... The most underrated player in the league. Um, people want to look at his old old age and some drop offs in certain games where he, you know, where he, you know, he had a pretty poor game earlier this season when they took on, uh, when they took on, who was it? <sighs> the game is mistake is 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 the oh I think it was the Suns where he had eleven points in uh in game five. I mean, in that game where they lost to the Suns, where they lost by four. You know, there's certain games that, you know, you might see like that. But then there's games that we got last week. And you know what really proved to me? Okay, LeBron is still under, they're still one of the best and underrated. His performance for Team USA. He was still the best, most important guy for that Team USA men's basketball team this summer. And this was a Team USA basketball team. With Steph Curry, with Kevin Durant, with Devin Booker, with Jason Tatum, with... Uh, with Drew Holiday, with Joel Embiid, um, with Bam Adebayo. I mean, it was a super team of super teams, and they were still heavily reliant. Now, Steph Curry in those in that semifinal and that final, especially late games, he was very, 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 very important, and he was their, the best players in those two games, yes. But throughout the duration of the Olympics, throughout the duration of the uh the pre uh the pre warm ups to get ready for the Olympics, LeBron James was their go to guy in you know the duration. He was the number one guy on the team and it was that for a reason because LeBron James is still one of the best. Even now he is still one of the best. There's nobody that can pass the ball um uh, pass the ball the way he can. Nobody, no point guard in the league. He is the best passer in the basketball by far, even right now. Nobody can create open shots better from teammates. Nobody can make a pass out of nothing the way LeBron James has. Nobody gets 
teammates in a better position to score the basketball than LeBron James does. He's the best creator in the National Basketball League, uh, National Basketball Association. It's not even close. He's the best passer. I'd also go say he is the best driver in the NBA right now. When he has a full head of steam and he puts his head down and he goes full train to the basket, nobody has a chance to stop him unless you got a, unless you have, um, a guy like Drew Holiday guarding him on his per, on, on the perimeter, trying to you know slow down his momentum heading to the basket, and then you have one Biamba under the rim. If you do that, okay, then maybe you got a chance. But I'm talking him putting his head down, drive, nobody can stop him. Your best, your only chance is to foul. Your only chance is to foul, even now. And, and people want to overlook that because oh, he's age 39 and he is a and he's a uh, 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 the capper, the this, the that, anything. People just want to say things. To the, no, he's still one of the best. He's still one of the best. And 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 by the way, this Lakers team, which I didn't really do much analyzing of this Lakers team, um, they start off seven and four. And I wasn't the biggest JJ Redick fan, and I, I still don't necessarily necessarily believe that he is the reason why the Lakers are better this season than they were last season. But over the past few seasons, you know, it's been a very, very long time that the Lakers have started off this good to a season. You know, 7-4, and four, which is not even that great of a start statistically, but if you compare Lakers teams in the past, they have really had, have had a rough starts to the season. And the fact that they started off 3-0 and and that they have now are 7-4, and four, it gives me signs that this team is a team that actually has a chance to do something because we haven't seen the Lakers teams in the past start this way. So I'm thinking that there's something better coming, that there's something more coming. Um, if I'm a Lakers fan, that's the way I'm thinking. The way Anthony Davis is playing, if LeBron James can, you know, pick and choose his moments to have games like what he had yesterday in the regular season and can have this sustained level of play in the playoffs when it matters and then you have Anthony Davis go in and then you can see what you you know I, you know obviously I love Austin Reeves I think he's a closer I think he's fearless um, he had a big game against the Grizzlies as well Hachimura depends on what Hachimura we get Dalton connect that can be a big x factor last game he had 19 points you know I like to see throughout the season how he develops how he fits in in, in here and then D'Angelo Russell that's somebody I think in the trade deadline could be moved for somebody that we can bring in that the Lakers can bring in to be, you know, more beneficial as it is because there is the whole lack of effort things. When D'Lo is on it, D'Lo can be a really, really, really important player for this Lakers team. But when D'Lo is not it, D'Lo could single handedly tank this Lakers team, and that inconsistency is is very very dangerous for a team trying to uh, trying to compete for something so you know if I'm the Lakers I have two I have potentially two first round picks two future first round picks that I can use to the trade and you also have D'Angelo Russell you got to make the salary cap work and all that and it, who knows but if you can get somebody in here that can make a better impact in it you know the highs of D'Angelo Russell's is actually really, really good, but the lows is really, really bad. So maybe you don't get somebody that can get you the highs of D'Angelo Russell when he's on it, but you can get that, you know, that heavy medium where, you know, you don't get the great performances from D'Angelo Russell, but you don't get those stinkers as well. You get somebody that's just more consistent, and consistency is important, especially from role players when you're talking about a team that's trying to compete to make a deep playoff run. So... Yeah, I'm. Uh, yeah, I'm. I'm looking forward to see how the Lakers uh, 